Welcome to the Straight from the Source's Mouth podcast. Frank talk about sex and dating. All right. Hello and welcome to the episode. Today, Krissa is back again and we have Daniel as well. And we are going to talk about the different online dating sites out there, which ones we're on, which ones we like, or especially those two. And also like the philosophy or methodology for how you and why you swipe right, as well as the different perspectives on the male female thing out there in the profiles and see what they say about that. So let's go ahead and start with Daniel, since you're new to this or our podcast. Um, what sites are you on or what sites have you liked or not liked? Hey, thank you, uh, Tamara. For me, one thing I like to point out in the beginning is there is two forms of dating. There's online dating and offline dating. And I think the majority of people are interested in online dating because of the convenience. And then you have a whole array of dating sites. You know, we started with eHarmony and then we started in the match.com and out of that became Tinder, which was the revolutionary thing back in, I think like 2010, 2011, when it became the greatest thing for me. However, I was in a a uh, committed relationship all of college and never got the opportunity to use Tinder until after that relationship ended. And it was the most confusing thing in the world for me because I would just swipe right on everything and thinking I would get a match and that never happened. And then over time, people said that ruins the algorithm. There's all these theories that you're supposed to do this, supposed to do that. I'm like, this is not for me. And and from from there on, majority of people I came across, friends, um, people I was on dates with, everyone was complaining and upset or depressed or feeling isolated that these apps aren't working. And from that on, I just kept trying more and more apps and not getting any matches. And I began to question, is it me? Is it the app? What's going on? And I actually fell more aligned with what I say offline dating is the ability to go into a grocery store or be at a bar and just live my life with the ability to feel free and not tie down to, I can only get matches online, but I can interact with uh, men, women, whatever the case. And if I'm interested in someone, I express that interest. Yeah. So not be afraid to actually go up and talk to someone in public versus relying on the online stuff. How about you, Carissa, which I know you're, well, you're newly, newly back to dating as well. So which sites or which philosophy do you have in general? Uh, thank you for having me again, Tamara. I appreciate it. Um, and I, I mean, I would have to agree a little bit with Daniel about online and offline dating, but, um, being, I say recently divorced, I guess it's been a while technically. Um, I really have, tr I've tried several different, um, dating applications. I've tried, I think the first, first one I tried was called happen. Um, which is about your location, similar to similar to Tinder, but it was, you know, who have you crossed paths with? Who is there that's also on um, Happen, like in your same location right at that moment? So it was um, in Kansas City, which is where I am, is it people don't use it because uh, I think they don't know it, it exists. But people aren't always in the same place at the same time. But when I was in Chicago, it was awesome. Um, yeah, I used to live in Chicago. And so when I went back to visit and I turned it on and was using it, I met a ton of people, which was really fun. You know, there it's just you have pictures. There's not really a lot of descriptions. And then you actually are meeting. You're actually out and you're in the same place. And then if you make a connection, great. But um I really liked that one just for the fact that it was a mix of both online and offline dating. So you knew who was actually where you were at the same time. Um, Tamara, you convinced me to get on Bumble recently. So um, when I do like it, uh, I don't like, uh, I, I swipe right or, well, actually I swipe, I actually decline people if they only have, if they only have one profile picture, if they really haven't taken a moment to actually say a sentence or two, um, I, I just am like, you know, they obviously that's, they're really not that interested. So, um, they haven't put in much effort. So how much effort are they going to put into, um, making a connection? So I, I decline those. 
um, swipe left. So the people I swipe right on, I make, you know, I see if we have matches with um, our interests. Um, if I like kind of what they've, their description um, has said, you know, and that's kind of what, you know, that's, those are the things that I, I kind of look for. Um, I know not all of my pictures are, you know, within the last 12 months. So I don't automatically think that if someone has a picture that's older, that, you know, that, that I should, you know, swipe left on them. Um, but I, I do. think, I, I, I mean, good. so I like Bumble, but. Sorry. I was just going to ask a quick question. I, I was just going to say, do you, when you see pictures and everyone looks different in all, if someone looks different in all the pictures or like, I guess for both of you, like Daniel, have you noticed where, um, well, I guess you don't do as much online dating, so up to you, but do you have something to say about that? Like the profiles and pictures or. Yeah. Um, just to reiterate, it's not so much that I, I don't do a lot of online dating. It's that my methodology is focused on, um, reality and not so much, you know, living in a, in a, a world where some people are just on there for validation. Some people are on there because they're bored. Some people are on there for a million reasons. And then everyone calls it dating. Whereas when you're out offline and you ask someone on a date, you, they, you know what you're getting. Um, and that's what I prefer. And I use online dating more of a secondary purpose. Like I hate to say it, but as a sales funnel or dating funnel, that's, that's what these apps have built for people is the ability to get massive amount of interactions with people in a small amount of time at scale. And something that happened to me on Thursday is one of my, uh, you know, best friends is seeing a girl. He met her on Bumble and they've been on like six dates in two and a half weeks. And he, they're considering a relationship. They're both divorced, have one kid. So they have a lot in common. He invited me on a double date to a comedy show in, uh, near DC and the girl that I had invited on the date, it was a first date. Normally, I wouldn't do a double date first date kind of thing, but I was just relaxing, having a fun time. And her photos, I already in my mind was like, I don't know if this is going to be a good match. And I was already you know, hesitant. And there were some you know, red flags that I noticed. And we can go into red flags later on. But not in like a shaming way, but she was significantly... Um, more heavy and heavier and, you know, tacked on weight from her photos. And it, 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 I wouldn't call it a catfish, but I was on, I felt like this isn't what I signed up for. And I already was hesitant. And then the date just went downhill from there. And, and I was not having a good time. And at the end of the night, I, I, we just both agreed that it wasn't, it wasn't a good fit. So it's not, the photos didn't match up and it was very frustrating and confusing um, but that, that doesn't happen too often. It was just a hard experience to digest, if that makes sense. Yeah, actually I've, I've heard it does happen more often than you think, but it sounds like you're in, not in your experience, but yeah, like, especially when they have different pictures and you can't tell you, you kind of hope the best picture is what they really look like. And then when you meet, yeah, you never know. But I have heard that complaint from men that, you know, if people have lost or, gain weight and don't share that. And then, uh, you know, especially if that's not their type, like there's obviously people that have no problem with that whatsoever and prefer that. But if it's not your type and you you know, present yourself a certain way, you can see having an issue. But uh, Chris, has there been any profiles where you're like, you know, like you said, red flags or any issues you've seen or. So I'm a bit jaded in the fact that uh, because of my profession, um, I am, always on the alert to things not matching up. So it's not necessarily the pictures, you know, I mean, I, I do want to make sure that like the pictures look like this, they're the same person. Um, Cause I've seen a couple of profiles where the pictures don't look like they're the same person. So I'm like, yeah, I'm out on that. Um, but if things don't, um, like I said, if things don't match up, like if I, if we do match and then I'm texting them or something like that and their, their, um, manner of communication doesn't match with how they, um, like wrote their profile. If they, um, 
like if their grammar and things like that are weird, um, I'm automatically, my antennas are up just because, like I said, because of my profession, um, I've run into, I'm in the financial world. And so I've had clients that have been, uh, been catfished and for money and things like that. And it all starts, you know, with online dating. And so I'm automatically wary. Um, so, I mean, I don't know if that is helpful at all, but, <laughs> um, yeah, no, I mean, it's particular about grammar and communication. Yeah. I've, I've definitely heard that from people. And that I know the guy I'm talking to now said my, the way I wrote my profile was one of the reasons because I had good grammar. So I totally get that. Daniel, are there any things you for sure, like you talked about red flags or things you won't or don't like or when you see it? Yeah. One thing that resonated with me or that jogged my thought is kind of a more of a thought experiment on, on, you know, what I've heard so far is that, you know, guys either don't put in the effort, they put in the effort, they don't know how to put in the effort. Even when they put in the effort, it's not the expectation that's met on the other side. And something that just to kind of frame this and give more perspective is if we had a hundred guys, how many of them have the ability to one, have good photos two write, write a good bio three, be able to text properly four, be able to get you off the app in person, go on a date six, be able to have a good date and seven, be able to, uh, you know, keep you attracted after the date and move on forward. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that pretty much sums it up <laughs> and those are all hard to get through for a lot of people. I mean, I think all of us are pretty much, most of us are pretty much clueless and just, you know, figuring it out and a lot of us not so well. Well, Daniel, I was going to ask you a question um, with, you know, making all of those good points is my, one of the biggest struggles that I've noticed is once we're texting and communicating, I'll make a suggestion about getting together, but then they don't then take the reins. So like, I'm trying to prompt that if they, and I don't know if that they don't have the ability to think about it and plan it, or if they don't have, or if they don't want to. And so that's where I guess maybe, maybe you can give us ladies and some insight on if we make a suggestion, is that intimidating or is that a good thing? Um, you know, what do you, what do you think? And why wouldn't a, a man take control of that and then, plan it out. That's a, it's a good question. And it goes back to, you know, the, the probability that the man is, I mean, it, it's difficult to say, because if you say a man's successful at dating, what does that mean? He's able to current dates into a relationship or that he's able to have good dates and everyone comes out with a positive outcome. That's not necessarily uh, a good relationship. And for a lot of guys, they go on a date and they're like, all right, this is the one. And then if they both agree, they get into a relationship. But what's missing is the amount of dates you go on plus the amount of experiences you have gives you um, the skill set. It's like both people have to, both parties, like men, women have to um, get better at dating. And I think that's the one of the issues with online dating is the environment right now is toxic. So you have a huge separation of who is capable of dating and who is not capable of dating. And a lot of times guys don't even get matches, like 80%. Tinder did a study and released data that 80% of the male users don't get any matches. <laughs> and there's there's 11.2 billion swipes per week, um, left and right swipes. So like that's a lot of people swiping and a lot of guys not getting matches. And what I think happens is those guys that might get one or two matches, they're not prepared to, you know, take control or escalate. Otherwise, um, they wouldn't be in the situation in the first place. They'd either be able to talk to a girl um, offline or they've had more experience swiping. So you take the situation where you, you have a guy you're texting with, you guys are hitting it off, and then a couple things can happen. A lot of times, the in my personal experience, the, the girl wants to have me suggest a date, me give a time and place, me coordinate it. Um, and that's how I like the dynamic for me. And, and some guys... When a girl says, hey, do you want to get together or do this? It's uh, a couple of things happen. One, they could be intimidated. Um, they're like, 
oh my god she's into me and like someone hasn't been into me or to they uh it's an added level of pressure and they might think they're going to pick the wrong place and then three they get skeptical they say well she's so willing to want to meet up what's so special about me and that's that happens more often than not and i think that's the sad reality is when <laughs> the girl is actually expressing interest and makes it easy for the guy they don't they don't see that as an opportunity and it just kind of falls flat do you think for example in this particular instance do you think it is um it is it's better for someone like me for example i plan I mean, I've, apparently i'm the social coordinator of my group of friends um and um i even i suggested that we get coffee i suggested a day and you know bet- a day and between these times um i found out kind of where he lived and said oh well this part of town is a great central spot and there's lots of coffee shops there you know pick one and so I'm like, and then he, it's like he didn't take that, take control of that. Uh, do you think from a woman's perspective, you know, I think I'm like, okay, well, maybe he doesn't want to actually meet up um, and isn't, doesn't really want to do even a little bit of work. He wants me to take control of that. And that was one of my biggest problems with my, my husband and um, so, I mean, I was always one, the one making plans and then he would always cancel at the last minute. So I'm like, all right, if I make plans and he cancels at the last minute, this is going to be a problem. So I guess from your perspective, do you think it's okay if we suggest a daytime and place and then go from there? Or is that a red Actually, flag that we should read into? Can I just offer one thing and then answer maybe whichever version you want? <laughs> I just want to say, I always just say, I prefer to meet sooner than later you. And then that prompts them to think, oh, she'll actually want to meet me. And then if when we get starting talking about to meet or not, I'll say, well, why don't you pick the time and I'll pick the location or come near me, but you pick the date or pick your favorite place. So we just, I just kind of leave it very open, but at least I start the dialogue. That's how I approach it. But Daniel, whatever you want to, whichever one you want to talk about. Yeah, I think, uh, Chris, you kind of hit the, the blind spot right on the, on the nail, uh, with, you know, your planner and with the was situation is kind of transferring over to the methodology for the guys. It's difficult because the, the whole traditional and then versus feminism and what to do and what not to do. Uh, a lot of situations, you know, when, you take the lead and take the charge, it's hard for the guy to reciprocate and readjust, take control, take the frame. A lot of times, and I hate to say this, is is you kind of have to downplay it. You have to kind of um, role play and, and, and how uncomfortable that is and how inauthentic that feels. A lot of times the guy is expecting the, the uh, he wants to court the courtship, you know, the whole old fashioned courtship. A lot of guys are stuck in that mentality. I don't say stuck as, as a bad thing, but I think there's pros and cons to that mentality and there's other mentalities and it's it seems like the easiest solution. And one thing that I found is take you know, flirting, for example, uh when you talk to someone in we'll just keep using the grocery store or the mall, for example, or like the let's say someone's working, like the, the classical, the guy wants to hit on the girl at the Abercrombie and Fitch behind the counter thing or something like that. If he goes straight up to her and, and says, I want to take you on a date or what's your number? Like it's not, it, it's not as subtle and other people, it, it could be seen as, you know, even if she's interested, she could say no because there's shame there. There's unprofessionalism. But if a guy comes in and, and is more covert and subtle and they just kind of know, and there's the body language and you can read the, the, the cues and there's more probability that, they're going to have uh, exchange numbers, exchange information. Um, but if the, the guy comes in more direct and overt about it, 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 it can be intimidating. And then the same thing occurs with a girl and online dating. And this is why Bumble is so difficult for, for women. Because a lot of, I follow the subreddit on, uh, but the Bumble subreddit. And it's really interesting because there's the whole complaint about, you know, 
women only say hi and then men don't know how to respond properly and the the women don't actually want to lead but the app is designed that way and the app is it's the best app for some people so i've made a, po- a comment on there that everyone was complaining i hate when girls post hi and i was like that's the easiest thing to respond to because she's leaving it up to you to say whatever you want she's messaged you so just go for it wing it but a lot of guys it's the same thing with you asking a guy out directly it's like the guy either gets it or he doesn't get it like if it's not a you thing or he's not interested or he's not attracted and that's kind of how i draw the line there i was just gonna add when you i read in a book the surrendered single which i think is the bible everyone should look at if you're single for a woman but she mentions like you know once you're talking to someone you know just say oh i wish guys like you would ask me out so you're not asking them out, but you're letting them know you would say yes if they ask you out. To me, that seems like the perfect line. I actually told that to someone, and now she's married. So I would say that it works. So uh, does that answer your question, Chris, or do you have more? It seems it sounds like what the disconnect for us is. I'm I'm referring to like once you've already established that you're probably going to meet and you're hitting it off. You know, when you decide where to meet, it's it seems easier to give options and kind of let you kind of both have to decide. But I don't know, if Chris. Ever use when? How early do you do you suggest meeting? Is it usually after a bit, or you like to just get it out there? And uh, I like to. I mean, I certainly rather. I'd like to meet sooner than later. I mean, I. You know, certainly there's a, you know, bit of a text texting chain that has to happen. But I, I personally do not want to text for a month, and then meet. Like I'd rather text maybe for a week. And if, you know, we have good banter, then, you know, let's meet for coffee and, you know, and then see how it goes. Because I actually did have really good text banter with a particular person. And then we met and in person, there just wasn't the chemistry or whatever. And, you know, super nice person really enjoyed, um, I wish we could actually be friends because I think we would be good wing people for each other. But um, yeah, I, I'm sooner than later. And maybe that's the line I should use, like you suggested, Tamara. Yeah, I've definitely found it helpful, if, especially if you're hitting it off and then just be like, you know, there's no reason to talk forever. If you're not interested, at least see if there's chemistry or just kind of broach that. Well, Daniel, do you have any comments on any of the latest stuff we just talked about? Yeah, something that I find helpful is you know if the end goal is to go out sooner than later and it, the problem is like you suggest going on a date before the guy does something that works or might work is saying hey do you want to get on the phone and then if the guy doesn't want to talk to you on the phone then it's very clear that he, he doesn't know how to or he's not actually interested in meeting so it kind of screens them out and it's less of a you know a hit to your your soul, like it's a rejection or not rejection. So that's kind of a, a mechanism to, you know, figure out who the person is prior to the date too. video calls. I feel like you're kind of, you know, over the top and invasive, but that might be something worth trying. And then also the, I think the positive assumption, and this is the opposite. Of this is kind of what makes the online dating so toxic is some people are super, super comfortable and validated by just staying in the app and never meeting. They're okay messaging. And what that kind of means is maybe they're in a relationship and they just want an, uh, an outlet. Maybe they, they aren't actually as intentional as dating. I think a lot of guys are not as intentional as, as women are, don't know what they want, and they're just either feeling it out or they're they're not actually interested in, in taking it, it further. And then, you know, once you get on a date – you always have the conversation. Is this serious? Is this casual? Is this friends of benefits? Is this, what is this? What is this? But you, people who bring up that on the first date, it, it kind of scares other people. Like this person's too serious, but I'm looking for something serious. It's a weird trade off that once you finally get off the app and once you finally get on a date, it's a completely different ball game. And I don't think anyone's taught how to, how to date properly. It's like, you don't have a, a course in high school like you do with sex ed about how to actually date and have a relationship, if that makes sense. Yeah. I was going to say, like when I talk early on, I'll I'll say my goal is to get off this thing as soon as possible. (laughs) So like actually meet someone that you want to be or like enjoy enough. But yeah, like I said earlier, everyone's 
generally pretty clueless about dating and especially with all this online stuff, people have forgotten how to speak in, in, you know, person. There's the reality show. I don't know if you guys watch, probably not love Island where it's a bunch of youngsters half naked in a beach house together, but they actually have real conversations and they're all like amazed at how they actually are authentic with each other and talk to each other. And I think that would, that actually is a good, I don't know, a good way to listen to how people talk. And it also shows a lot of stuff you might, I candy, you might be interested in looking at. But back to the, you met, you brought up sex. So since this is dating and sex podcast, I just wanted to say real quick, I talked to a guy about this. Like some people ask about how sexual they are fairly early on. And it, to me, it's more of a, are you also this way versus, or are you not this way versus like, if I talk about sex, that means I want to have sex with you the second I see you as a guy, Daniel, how do you, how have you seen that handled? I personally am open to it. And I like people that are also sexual. So to me, it's not a bad thing to ask that question. It is just literally like, okay, that's cool. And then you move on to the next thing where if you're compatible or not. It's one of those, like, uh, it's simple, but it's complicated things. Uh, for me, the I'm more comfortable with my sexuality than I think the majority uh, of people of, of men are, and I'll just speak in my friend groups or the people I know. And the you know the the mo of of, of the stereotypical man is oh he just wants to hook up or uh, he wants he expects sex on the first date or you know. If we have sex on the first date, he got what he wanted. And he's he's going to leave. So there's a lot of different things going on there, and and I think it comes down to the type of guy. You have the guy that uh, wants a relationship and thinks that it's very transactional. That if he takes this girl out for a nice dinner, she either want a second date or she'll want to have sex with me. And then when he doesn't get that, he feels rejected or it's not part of the plan, and he, he starts resenting uh, women, and that that. That happens more time than not, and that's like your stereotypical nice guy. And then you have, you know, your f boys that you know what you're gonna get. Like they they don't <laughs> you sign you know what you signed up for beforehand, and that's just what you get. Some people want that. Some people find out they don't want that, and that's that's fine as well. But what's interesting is the guys that say they want a relationship but really just want to hook up. I think they're the most toxic guys because they're. They're hiding. They're they're building covert conversations. They're influencing the, the, the girl, and it's uh, manipulation can be good or bad, but it's definitely bad forms of ma- manipulation because they know if they push the right buttons and say the right things and, and and lead the girl to the conclusion that they want a relationship, they're gonna get quote unquote what they want. And I think sex on the first date is different for for both men and women, and I think the the best route to think like think of the secure attachment versus insecure attachments and let's say you have two insecure people a lot of times they're going to have sex on the first date to feel like progress or validation and security where you have two secure people like they'll they'll look at each other and be like hey like you know you could come back to my place tonight but i think we should see each other another night and the implica- implication of sex is there and they're able to openly talk about it without the expectation and honestly, those are the best. I would rather have that on a first date than actually, you know, get laid because there's an establishment of rapport. But I don't know how many guys are at the the level of awareness where they can openly say, hey, you know, I know we both know where this night's going to end. I think we should end it early. But that's your stereotypical, you know, cliche movie thing where then they end up going upstairs anyways, because that's the one you think you want to hear. So it's it's I think it's different. For some people, but the, the people that hide behind, you know, a facade, I don't, I don't think that that's going to be help, healthy for anyone. No, I, I totally agree that those are the most toxic ones, the ones that claim they want a relationship, but really they don't. And then the last thing you said about um, sex or not early on, I've, I've done that before. We're like, yeah, like, I think you're totally hot and we, I would love to, but you know, we should wait. And to me that that would answer it. Like, I'm, I think you're very attractive, but let's just wait and make sure there's, you know, more of a connection or until we have, we already know this is great. So let's not ruin it just yet. And not just yet. That sounded bad. But you know what I'm saying? I agree with you. And although I, I did say that to one guy and he thought he was being rejected, um, 
or I, I mentioned that I, have, I had done that in the past and he said he would have felt rejected if I said something like that. So we are nearing the end. So I want to just um, answer on that last part. What um, do you think of that, of saying to someone like, you know, I, like you just said, I think you're, we agree we're both attracted to each other, but let's wait. Um, what do you think a guy would say if you, if I made that comment? Uh, so one, I definitely want to hear Chris's point of view on this, but for, for me, the, it's better when the guy says it, it's better when it's not even said, it's better when it's just understood and, and that's how it ends. And, um, at the minimum, like if, if you guys kiss at the end of the night and it's, it's a, it's a, there's more behind the kiss than, than that. But like, if the, if you say to a guy, Hey, I find you attractive, but let's wait. And then there's no physical or sexual escalation or hand holding or hugging or embracing or anything, then it, it, it seems standoffish and, and inauthentic to the guy. But at that same point, it's not the, in my point of view, it's not the woman's responsibility to make that move after saying that. Like, the the way I handle that situation is if anything is 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 directly implied about uh, sex, that's the moment I go in for a kiss and make a move. <laughs> what what else is there if, if 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 you're both admitting you like each other? You know what I mean? Okay. No. Yeah, I, I like your approach better. And it's usually after yeah we've you know held hands, kissed or whatever, and then they're thinking they want to do more, and I'm like, no, like we should wait. I guess that's where is where I would say that. Either you can answer or Carissa, but this is the tail end. So we can also have a part two of this conversation as well, I'm trying to keep the podcast to 30 minutes. So I would gladly have both of you on again for slightly different take on this as well. Any closing comments for either of you or start with Carissa closing comment. So just to, I guess, maybe my experience with that is I've been on a lot of first dates, but not a lot of second date or actually zero second dates. And I've had multiple, multiple men after we have gone on a date, um, not, I mean, they've hugged me, but then not even tried to lean in for a kiss or anything like that. And then I get a text later and asked, you know, can we be friends with benefits? And I'm like, um, wait, like there was like zero sexual connection. So, um, I would say, you know, maybe to your point, you know, and also Tamara having a bit of a conversation or like seeing if there's chemistry, I think is a very positive thing. And maybe we should have a part two on this conversation. You know, you know, what does that discussion look like about sex while you're dating? Um, but I don't know. I don't know the answer, but I just know my current experience and um, not yet has one of the men I've gone out with even tried to hold my hand or kiss me. So. I, I feel uh, feel you on that. I, there's a long period of time where I kept telling people like I just want to make it to the third date, uh, and and then I made the rule like I'm not gonna have sex to the fifth date until I meet the right person. But it did, it it's complicated. Um, but I think uh, like for you the the recommendation I would have is maybe look inward on that. If something's happening to that level of extreme, it's it's harder to blame. Others when uh, maybe there's something underlying that that you could do differently to get the result you want from from that, if that makes sense. And then my closing, I have two closing comments. One is there's a weird underlying uh, gray area with consent. I mean, even when it comes to kissing or physical touch or sex, and then layer on that the the fear of you know. Uh, a lot of guys are, are afraid of, you know, the whole Me Too movement, even though it's not even applicable to the, the level, the, the low level of, of sexuality on a first date. It's much, it's a much higher uh, issue and prerogative in culture. And I find that guys don't know how to cross that gray area because I've been on several dates where there's implicit consent, there's, you know, verbal consent, there yes means yes, no means yes, and then there's yes means no and no means yes. That's the gray area. It's it's like some girls want the guy 
to to press forward. Like it, some girls are like you're so press or like I'm looking for a guy that'll you know cross that boundary. And when I say no, I have to go home or I have to leave early. I'm not actually saying I have to go home and early. I want to see what the guy's going to do. And the, a lot of guys miss that opportunity because it, it's risky, dangerous, or they just don't understand it. So that's something. It's not on the girls. It's more on the guys to handle that. Um, I don't know. You call it suave or some guys get called players but in the end like that's people people want that that chase that push and pull and that that thing that is a complicated area and then the the second thing we've talked a lot about time day location and scheduling who should schedule first what should happen um you know the downfall of the whole funnel after matching and chatting and something that um I've been working on since 2019. I used to live in San Francisco. I'm a software engineer and dating and relationships is a passion of mine. I was in a four-year relationship in college and left that. And I've been single since 2015. And I've, at this point, I'm single on purpose. I, I've, there's a book called Single on Purpose, which is very interesting. And I've found who I am in that. And I found that there's a lot of issues in online dating and they're business models in the end. So they're not designed to for people to have fulfillment or an experience. People just take that as an opportunity to meet each other. Where I built a an app and a website that I've been working on and testing called Date First. And the whole concept is you remove the the pictures up front, you remove chatting, and literally it's like a, a an ad or a way to like an Airbnb experience someone, the guy posts a date, the girl posts a date. you put the location, you put what you're interested in, what you're looking for. You are able to see similar listings in the area. And basically you can click a button, say book now or schedule. And you put in the time and the day and the person gets a notification says, Oh, who is this person? They want to go on a date with me. Let me check out their profile. This is, this is who they are. This is their, you know, response rate and the whole concept is the online dating world is is scarce so people come from a scarcity mindset versus an abundance mindset so the world you live in if you had unlimited dates if you were able to schedule a date every single day of the week or three dates on thursday or however many dates you want if 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 dates and scheduling was no longer an issue would so many people be afraid to actually express what they're looking for. When you take away that problem of all the matching and the swiping and the chatting and the fall off and the ghosting and the flaking and upfront, you know, the time and the day and the place, and then you're interested in getting another person. One, you know what they're interested in because that's the date they want to take you on. And then girls can literally, it's like an application or the guys can apply to a girl's posting. So they know there's no, there's no guessing where, the, where a girl wants to go, if that makes sense. No, that sounds amazing. And it sounds like a part two and a part three. We'll have sex part two and then your app part three. Cause that's, yeah, you literally just pick the date. You make a date you would want to go on and whoever wants to join you and you get to pick the top choice or several choices and interview them all. Sounds amazing. And I will say that we'll leave it there because time is running out, but definitely a part two, part three, we will have you on as much as you would like to. Thank you, Carissa. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Tamara. Thank you. Yeah, this is awesome. And we will promote this September 7th, which you already have heard this. But um, yes, thank you very much. And hope everyone enjoyed it. See you next time for part two and part three of this episode. Thank you. Frank Talk, Frank Talk, sex and dating educates.